Howdy, folks. Thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich, and in this notes cast, we're going to be talking about cellular respiration. And no, we are not talking about the respiratory system. Cellular respiration is not when cells breathe. Cellular respiration has everything to do with sugar and burning that sugar to transfer the energy into other molecules so that you have the energy to run around and do things that need to be done. Well, if cellular respiration isn't cells breathing, then we should have a good working definition of cellular respiration. It's the breakdown of fuel molecules, usually glucose, to transfer the energy from those fuel molecules into smaller usable molecules called ATP. In the case of aerobic respiration, those chemical reactions take place using oxygen. Now, aerobic respiration takes place in three separate stages. Uh, and there's a lot of biochemistry going on here. This is very complex. Uh, I'm going to give you the real general basics here, but we should be familiar with at least the three overall stages, um, what happens in those stages and where they take place. Uh, the first stage is glycolysis. And like the name kind of hints, it involves the breakdown of glucose. And though we usually think of the mitochondrion as the powerhouse of the cell where cellular respiration takes place, uh, glycolysis the beginning of cellular respiration actually takes place within the cytoplasm. The products of glycolysis then move uh, into the Krebs cycle. Uh, the Krebs cycle takes those products and breaks them down even further, uh, and this takes place within the good old mitochondria. Now, these uh, chemical reactions, the Krebs cycle, are only going to proceed if oxygen is available. Uh, the products of the Krebs cycle then move to the electron transport chain, uh, the electron transport chain then makes a whole lot of ATP, uh, and it also takes place within the mitochondria. It's actually the electron transport chain specifically that does actually use the oxygen itself. We also need to be familiar with the overall chemical reaction of uh, aerobic respiration. It's going to start with good old C6H12O6, which is glucose. Uh, when oxygen is present, that proceeds, that's what the arrow means, that a chemical reaction is taking place, that proceeds and eventually ends up with carbon dioxide and good old water. Uh, now the goal here is to create uh, ATP, is to transfer that energy. So there's actually another reaction or set of reactions that are taking place at the same time. Uh, and that's why we have this curved arrow. And this is where we get the ADP and P and phosphorylate that into ATP so that our cells have the energy to run around and jump around and do all the fun stuff that we like to do. That's aerobic respiration. We have to also talk about anaerobic respiration. We're still transferring energy from the breakdown of larger molecules, usually glucose, into a usable form like ATP. However, these chemical reactions uh, proceed without oxygen, so oxygen is not involved. There are several different types of anaerobic respiration, but they all start the same way with glycolysis, that breakdown of glucose that's taking place within the cytoplasm. The products of glycolysis don't move to the Krebs cycle, don't move to electron transport. Both of those need oxygen, and so they're not even involving the mitochondrion. Now, one of the other jobs of the electron transport chain is to actually take some of the materials that are produced from glycolysis and recycle them so that they can be used in glycolysis again. And in fact, without the electron transport chain, there isn't going to be any recycling going on. But since we're not dealing with oxygen, we're not dealing with the Krebs cycle, we're not dealing with the electron transport chain, and heck, we don't even need those mitochondrion. So the recycling is not being done. And without this recycling, glycolysis is not going to be able to proceed. Enter our friend fermentation. Now, fermentation is going to do the recycling of those products for glycolysis that the electron transport chain can't do because we're under anaerobic conditions. And since uh, glycolysis can't proceed under anaerobic conditions without fermentation, uh, we can use the terms fermentation and anaerobic respiration interchangeably. Uh, since it starts with the glycolysis, here's good old glucose. Now we're not going to use any oxygen that is going to proceed and uh, yield carbon dioxide and then some other carbon bearing compound. Uh, the different types of fermentation all have different uh, carbon bearing compounds that they produce. Uh, 
So whether we're talking about making bread or making beer or making muscle pain, um, they're all fermentation pathways. And the goal is the same, is to transfer that energy. So we're still going to be phosphorylating ADP and P into good old ATP. There are two fermentation pathways that we need to be familiar with. Alcoholic fermentation is one. This is a pathway that is carried out by yeast under anaerobic conditions, and it's what uh, we exploit of the yeast in order to make things like beer and wine, as well as good old bread. Uh, it's going to start with glycolysis. So we start out with glucose and no oxygen. It makes carbon dioxide, and this time it makes ethyl alcohol. Again, the goal is to phosphorylate ADP um, into ATP, so it still does that. The problem is uh, ethyl alcohol is actually toxic. So uh, if it's in an enclosed container, that ethyl alcohol is going to build up to a point where it kills off the yeast. So this is not really sustainable. When I was in high school playing football, my nickname was Glacier. It was large and got in the way and didn't move real fast. Running is not my strong suit. Uh, and still, if I run for any real appreciable distance, I get out of breath, get that stitch in my side, and I, I feel like I, I can't possibly, you know how I'm feeling, uh, you know, when, when you just you just can't breathe fast enough to provide your muscles with oxygen. It feels like uh, you're dying. Uh, well, really what is happening is you're not providing your muscles with enough oxygen and you are going into what's called oxygen debt. Now, the nice thing is, is our cells don't just immediately die. They can actually switch over to lactic acid fermentation. Uh, and so instead of using oxygen, now it's going to go without oxygen and produce lactic acid. Still going to phosphorylate the ADP into ATP, so we're still getting the energy that we need. Uh, however, we are producing lactic acid. The problem with lactic acid is as it builds up around the muscles, uh, it can lead to fatigue and cramping um, and uh, uh, not so fun. Uh, interestingly enough, the only way that you can get the lactic acid away from the tissues is by actually moving the muscles. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why uh, uh, when people run their incredible four minute mile, um, they run through the tape, yay, and they continue going uh, and doing another lap. Uh, it's a warm down lap. It, uh, you're not putting your body into oxygen debt, but you're still moving the muscles and moving the fluids so that uh, the lymphatic system can uh, remove that lactic acid. I've done my fair share of brewing. And one of the things that we have to do with brewing is we have to actually force the yeast to go into alcoholic fermentation. Uh, the yeast would much prefer to be doing aerobic respiration. And so we have to actually starve it from oxygen in order to kind of force the situation. Now, why would yeast really want to go through aerobic respiration rather than anaerobic respiration? Well, the, the proof here lies in a little accounting. If we look at uh, aerobic respiration uh, and uh, the ATP that is produced, and then we compare that to anaerobic respiration, uh, either pathway, doesn't matter which one, whether we're doing alcoholic or lactic acid fermentation, yep, we're also making ATP. So both of them are yielding energy. The trick here, of course, is that when we go through alcoholic fermentation, the yeast is only producing per glucose molecule two ATP molecules. Now we compare that to the number of ATP molecules that are produced per glucose under aerobic conditions, that's 36 ATP molecules. So I don't know about you, but I'd much prefer to earn 36 bucks an hour than two bucks an hour. So we have to kind of force the yeast to do work for only two ATP per glucose. Again, Breathing is not the same as cellular respiration. It's not when cells breathe. Okay, it is the transfer of chemical energy from the breakdown of larger molecules, usually glucose, to ATP. Breathing is necessary for cellular respiration in us big, clunky, multicellular organisms because we need a supply of oxygen and we need a mechanism to get rid of the carbon dioxide that is needed and produced through aerobic respiration. So take a deep breath, think about it, All right? But cellular respiration is not the same thing as breathing. Well, we'll stop there for now. Thanks again for checking into Mr. Ulrich's landofbiology.com. Again, I am Mr. Ulrich, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email or uh, leave a question in the comments section below if you're on YouTube. Uh, other than that, we'll see you in class.